Hey, welcome back. We've been talking about some introductory physics stuff for physics classes dealing with motion. The technical term is kinematics, one-dimensional kinematics. That's the study of motion without respect to the cause of that motion, which are forces, which are pushes or pulls. And I've gone over strategies of how to deal with kinematics problems, but because the last lesson was a bit long, I didn't get a chance to go through some example problems. So I'm going to do that here. So where have we been? We've been talking about our five simple steps for using kinematics equations to solve physics problems. What are we talking about now? We're talking about kinematics problems, strategies, and solutions shown. So example problems. And where are we going with this? What's our next lesson on? Our next lesson is actually going to be on two-dimensional kinematics. So one-dimensional kinematics, what that means is we're talking about just the x-axis or just the y-axis, so motion in just one dimension. Whereas two-dimensional kinematics has to do with motion in two dimensions, like a good example would be a projectile. If you threw something in the air, it would follow a parabolic path. And describing that and figuring out what would happen with that, like how to make a shot in basketball, that kind of thing, those are two-dimensional kinematics problems. But before we get there, we need to get our solid foundation for one-dimensional kinematics. So let's look at some example problems and put these strategies into good use. All right, so the first problem I'm going to give you is it says an ATV has an initial velocity of 3 meters a second. If it accelerated at the rate of 0 0.40 meters per second squared for 6 seconds, what is its final velocity? And then there's a B part that we'll get to later. All right, the challenge with kinematics problems is that there are four equations to choose from, sometimes just three. This last one sometimes isn't included. It's not on the AP equation sheet, for instance. But there are multiple equations to choose from. So how do we approach this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down what the problem tells us in terms of these variables. So physics problems are like word problems. You just read the word problem. And as you go, you stop every once in a while and write something down so you don't get overwhelmed. Students who get overwhelmed look at the entire problem and they're like, ah, oh, I can't do this. But if they just focus on a very small section of the problem at a time, they can take it step by step and sooner or later, they can actually finish and solve for the problem. So let's do that. The very first thing it says is the initial velocity here. And then we're given the acceleration. Then we have the time. What is its final velocity? I wrote that down over here. And next, what we're going to do is draw a diagram. Now, for this one, it's not so important, but let's go ahead and get in the habit of doing that because as physics becomes more difficult, diagrams are actually going to be pretty crucial for us understanding what's going on. In this case, though, we could just diagram our initial velocity is in that direction. In our acceleration, we could draw just differently than the initial velocity. That would be going in the same direction. So this object is going to be speeding up for part A. Okay, and here is the main strategy I want you to get. So if you remember nothing from the screencast except for this one thing, this is what I want you to remember. I want you to ask yourself, what is the problem ignoring? And in this case, I do not mean your final velocity. We're not ignoring the final velocity. We just don't know it. My question is not that. My question is, what is a physics concept that we have talked about that you can see in these equations over here that is being completely ignored in this problem? And the answer is going to be delta x. You see a delta x here, you see a delta x here. This actually will simplify to delta x. I'll show you that later in a problem in this lesson. So if you take a look, this is the equation that is also ignoring delta x. And the strategy is you want to start the problem with that equation. So that's your clue. You say, well, what's being ignored? Delta x. Which equation ignores delta x? This top one. All right, then we start the problem with the top equation. So let's go ahead and circle that and then start the problem. So we would write out our given values. At this point, I would normally say just isolate for your unknown, but our unknown is going to be our v final. It's already isolated for. So now we're ready to plug in our numbers along with our units. Make sure you put your units in there. They are there to help you to catch mistakes and to make it clearer to your reader what you're doing and talking about. You go ahead and plug in your numbers. Easy problem. There you go. There's your final velocity. Next up, let's go ahead and solve B. It says if it accelerates to the rate of minus 0 0.60 meters per second squared, how long will it come to a stop? So we just write down the things that we know. Remember, our initial velocity is still 3.0. So I go ahead and write that down. My new acceleration is different than what it was. It's negative. That is possible. You can have a negative acceleration. Acceleration's a vector. It just means that the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the positive motion. And our v final is equal to zero. Our time is our unknown. 
And my question again, the strategy I want you to get a hold of is what variable are we ignoring here? And in this case, it's not time. We're actually solving for time. So time is our unknown. What are we ignoring is the question. And the answer again is delta x. And so you say then the follow-up question is, well, which equation ignores delta x? And that's going to be our top equation. So we go about starting the problem using the top equation. Our diagram looks not exactly the same because the acceleration is going to be the opposite direction as our initial velocity. But again, we want to solve for our unknown. And the thing that is being ignored again is going to be our delta x. There's no delta x over here. In other words, we're not solving for delta x. We're just ignoring delta x. All right, so let's continue and solve the problem. We go ahead and write out our equation. This V final is actually zero because it comes to rest. We can go ahead and continue to solve for our time. We want to isolate for our time, so we just plug in our numbers once it's isolated, use our units, and we go ahead and solve. The answer is going to be five seconds. Easy. You can do this. All right, let's take a look at another problem. It says a ball rolling down a hill starts from rest and accelerates at a rate that's given 2.3 meters per second squared. If it accelerates for 5.55 seconds, how far does it move? So the first thing we're going to do following our strategy is go ahead and write down. Just take it little bit by little bit as you do the problem and go ahead and write down what the problem is saying as you read through the problem. And that's what I'm doing here. And then the next question you ask yourself, the strategy, the main strategy you're going to use here is to say, well, what is the problem ignoring? So take a moment and figure out what is the problem ignoring? Oh, I should say after you draw your diagram, we should draw our diagram, although it's not as useful here. It's good to get in the habit of it. But what variable are we ignoring here? And we are ignoring final velocity. We don't know what the final velocity is going to be. We're not asked for it. And so we want to look for an equation that ignores final velocity as well. The second equation does. So we're going to start with that second equation. So we go ahead and start with that second equation. Again, we're looking for how far that it moves. This on the left is going to reduce to a delta x. After we write down these things and we have our diagram drawn, this x final minus x initial, if we draw this x initial off to the left, we have x final minus x initial, that is delta x. So we can simplify the left side and just say delta x is equal to v initial times t plus 1 half at squared. Normally at this point I would say, oh, you need to isolate for your unknown, but it's already isolated for us. So we can go ahead and plug in our numbers with our units and solve. And notice before we solve that this whole term drops out, this left term drops out because your initial velocity is zero. That's something you're looking for because that will make your problem easier, right? Anytime you have zero in one of these terms, that term basically drops out unless it's an addition thing. But at this point you could say, well, it drops out and you end up with 36 meters being your answer. Let's try one more problem and see how this goes. We're going to say, all right, we've got the same ball rolling down the same hill starting from rest, accelerating at the same rate. If its final velocity is 20 meters a second down the hill, how far has it traveled? So we go ahead and write out what we know. Notice what we know is somewhat the same, but somewhat different from what we had last problem. It's a modification of last problem. We now know its final velocity is going to be 20 meters a second, and we're looking for its delta x. So the major strategy is what are we ignoring? What variable... What physics concept are we just ignoring at this point? And I hope you can see that the answer is time. We're ignoring time. So then which of the four equations shown is also ignoring time? Well, the third equation is. So that's the equation we're going to start the problem with. We're going to go ahead and draw our diagram first, but we are going to start the actual writing of the problem out with the third equation. So let's go ahead and do that here. There's our third equation. We're looking for delta x. And at this point, we also want to look for zeros, right? We want to say, all right, what am I trying to isolate for? But also, we want to look for zeros. And so what is something that is zero here? And the answer is the initial velocity. And if that's the case, we can cancel out that initial velocity, which makes the problem easier. We go ahead and continue. We are isolating for unknown. We've got this shown. Notice at the very end, I'm plugging in my numbers, not before that. And my numbers have units. I go ahead and solve, and I end up with 85.5 meters. That's how you would go about solving one-dimensional kinematics problems. Hopefully this has been helpful.
I'm going to start talking you through two-dimensional kinematics concepts as we transition from this unit to the next, or this chapter to the next, you could say, however you want to think of it. If you have any comments, please throw a comment down below, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.